at midnight 19th of January, Harley Davidson revealed to all the new models for the year 2021. Getting to meet the creative team, engineers and CEO with each talking about the specific models in their lineup. The show was of course kicked off with Jason Momoa, my man. Welcome to HD 2021. I am Jason Momoa. What's up everybody? I love this brand with all my heart and I love what it represents. And it has been a big year. It's going to be a lot of cool things coming out. And HD is bringing it. All right. Personally, I'm very excited to see what the 2021 bikes are. So without further ado, here's our Harley CEO, Jochen Seitz. Mahalo. He did the introduction and we were given an introduction and overview of Harley Davidson's plans by CEO Joachim Zeiss. Hi everyone and welcome to the Harley Davidson Museum in Milwaukee for our very first global launch event, Harley Davidson 2021. Now we have quite a lot to talk about here and this will be my take on the models and view it from a marketing standpoint. So let's just get to it. Hello everyone, I'm Fletch. With all the pomp and pageantry, Harley Davidson has finally revealed all the 2021 models, or at least the ones that matter in terms of marketing, on the 19th of January at midnight. Well, at least here in Singapore. I understand the general feeling that it was a recorded video as opposed to a true live event. With the pandemic in these times, it's really hard to do without breaching safe distance regulations. I have a good authority that the first reveal event will be the first of many to talk about the entire line and not only about the Pan American. But before we continue, let's address the elephant in the room. There were many rumors as to which model stays and which model will be discontinued. Well, we know now. No longer on the lineup are the Breakout and FXDR. No real comment has been made on the reasons but I'm sure it's related to a marketing position and direction they would like to go. If I had to guess, based on the new classifications, when you go to the Harley Davidson website, street, cruiser, touring, CBO, Both the FXDR and Breakout don't really fit in any of these categories. Although when you look at the Fat Bob, it too doesn't fit, but I believe sales figures keep it in the lineup. Also noticeably, missing from the lineup are the Streets 500 and Street 750. When you look at the street category, they're referring to sportsters. Now, with that out of the way, with the exception of the electric bicycle, there are two more new models on the way the not yet named future custom model, and the one that I'm really excited about, the Pan American. Although not launched on the 19th of January, there will be a separate launch on the 22nd of February. And what has me excited about this is that we get to see them taking it through its paces in Kenya over all terrains. And also, we'll be able to get all the details then. Jason Momoa, my man, will be going through their journey of the Pan American in Kenya. Now onto the new models. The launch focus on its mainstays and highlighted the marketing direction for CVOs, Touring, and the stars of the Cruiser models. Let's start with the street category, Sportsters. When you check out the street category, you're already struck by the reduced range of Sportsters. What used to be a number of choices, you are presented with only three, an 883, a 1200cc iron, and the 48 Special. 
A significant model missing is the Roadster, which is a popular model but don't seem to have any indication on the reason for its discontinuation. Again, from the marketing standpoint, it makes sense to feature only what contributes to the revenue of Harley-Davidson. You know, in marketing and sales, like on restaurant menus, through sales history, you'll be able to identify the stars and the lost leaders. The three sports are iconic and stand out from the crowd. Making variants of the tried and true only confuses the buyer and it will be a hard sell to push to the others when there is really little difference. Cruisers. At the launch event, they featured two of their models, the Street Bob, The new Street Bob has been bumped up in displacement to 114 cubic inches. For one of their lighter bikes, the power to weight ratio would be phenomenal. Interesting that the presenters use the moniker entry level. Anything that's labeled entry level has a connotation of being weak or inferior to the other models. Like it was with the Sportster range. The sports are great motorcycles with enough power and range to keep up with the big twins. The new colors and tank badge on the Street Bob makes the motorcycle really stand out in the crowd and also with the new displacement makes it a mean street brawler. From a marketing standpoint, they have released the Softail standard which was touted as a bare blank canvas for customization. In the previous years, both the Street Bob and the standard were at 107 which would mean niche sales for the first time buyers would consider the lower price of the against the street bob. Now with the new colors, the standard now only comes in one color, tank badge, and most importantly, the Milwaukee 8114, it differentiates itself from the others, and noticeably they add a pillion pad as opposed to marketing solo rider. It really is an attractive motorcycle. Hmm. I wonder if I would trade up my diner. Nah. The Fat Boy has been an iconic motorcycle with styling and thick design from forks to tires, making it a cruiser you won't want to mess with. Not to mention that the Terminator kicked butt on it. At the launch event, the Fat Boy was introduced by the grandchildren of the original founders. On looking at the cruiser lineup, one noticeably strange decision to be kept at the lower displacement of 107 was the Sports Glide. With a name like that, you would think putting a 114 on it would help it in its sales. But like the Heritage, it was marketed as a cruiser ready for touring with new custom match paint on the luggage and new colors, tank badge and a sporty fairing would make it a great medium tourer. So from a marketing standpoint, it's a shame to be left with the same powertrain as the previous year since it was already marketing similarly to the Heritage, which is the 114. The Softail Stim is still in the lineup, although rumored to be discontinued, it is still an impressive motorcycle. New colors bring out its sleek lines. It too didn't receive a bump in displacement, only leaving it as a 107. Talking about marketing, looks are just as important as the features and this year they seem to be moving about from the blacked out look to featuring more chrome and also more importantly the 2021 colors are unique and vibrant and especially for the CBOs. The Road Glide and Street Glide still maintain their looks and power with the CBOs getting a power up to a whopping 117. <music> Oh, 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 oh,
are enhanced by the new colors and tank badges, with the CVOs getting a new sound system. The Rogue King still keeps its iconic look with 114 displacement and its more bare bones look for a tourer with most of the features of the glides minus the distractions of the electronic or light things. There was a segment in the reveal that talked about the new colors and not just for the CVOs, but some of the other models as well. The most significant color is the Snake Venom, which as you make a walk around the vehicle, you could see a shift in hues, underscored by a number one badge. There were some nice surprises and some disappointments in the reveal. I believe that the entire lineup is a marketing decision to streamline their range, kept the best sellers, and introduce the new market segment they wish to embark in. Do leave your comments below to let me know what you think. If you haven't yet, the like button. And if you are new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell to let you know when the next video is out. Thank you very much for watching and do safe rides.